All right, today we're going to talk about uh, vector-borne and zoonotic diseases, an important uh, topic in environmental health. Uh, vector-borne diseases highly depend on environmental condition and they can uh, infect and even kill the patients and also pose a huge socioeconomic burden to the society. In today's class, in the first module, we're going to first become familiar with the important concepts and terminologies in vector-borne diseases such as what is a vector, uh, what are zoonotic diseases, what is infectious disease, re reservoir, host, and uh, also what are the adverse effects of environment and occurrence of vector-borne diseases. Uh, then we will talk about uh, important vector-borne diseases worldwide. Uh, we we'll start with malaria, which is the most important uh, vector-borne diseases across the world. Malaria is a terrible disease and kills almost 500,000 people every year and is an endemic and is endemic in uh, hundreds of countries. Uh, we will talk about its geographic distribution, transmission, symptoms, and its uh, control plan. Uh, then we will talk about leishmaniasis, one of the most common neglected tropical diseases, which is an uh, which is endemic in uh, more than 88 countries and uh, infects uh, 2 million cases every year. Uh, we will see its geographic distribution, transmission, and clinical spec uh, spectrum. Uh, these are major vector more diseases worldwide, but not but they are not common in the United States. In the last module, we'll move to the major vector borne diseases in the U.S., such as West Nile virus and Lyme disease. Uh, West Nile virus is the most frequent mosquito-borne disease in the U.S. that infects almost 3,000 people every year. And uh, Lyme disease is the most frequent tick-borne disease in the, in the U.S. Every year, 30,000 people get the Lyme disease. Uh, we will see their geographic distribution, transmission cycles, and symptoms. Uh, let's start with the basic concepts and terminologies in vector-borne disease and zoonotic disease. The first concept is pathogen or infectious agent. Pathogen or infectious agent refers to the bacteria, virus, parasite, and fungus that are necessary to cause the disease. They are also known as germs. Uh, these germs or pathogens live in our body and normally they are harmless, but under some conditions they can invade our body and can cause the disease. So what are infectious diseases? Infectious diseases are type of diseases that are resulted from the activities of uh, pathogens or these germs that invade our body. They can invade our body in many ways. Uh, what are the modes of invasion of pathogen or transmission modes? The first mode of transmission is direct transmission from an infected person to a non-infected person. And uh, an example of direct transmission is HIV AIDS that the pathogen can be transmitted through sexual relationship. Another way of invasion is through air such as sneezing, coughing and breathing, even laughing uh, some type of diseases in this category uh, are influenza and tuberculosis. Infectious agents can also invade our body by the bite of infected vectors such as mosquito-borne disease like malaria or tick-borne disease like Lyme disease. And the last mode of transmission is by ingesting uh, contaminated water or contaminated food like cholera that we talked about that in Jon Snow story. The control of cholera in London related to uh, contaminated water pump in Broadway Street in London. So these are the modes that uh, pathogens or infectious agents can invade our body and uh, can cause uh, infectious diseases. Another concept uh, here is host. Uh, basically host refers to an infected uh, organism. It can be an animal or can be human being. Host provides nutrition and uh, environment for pathogen to multiply and develop. So hosts uh, carry pathogen, but uh, they don't uh, show symptoms themselves. And uh, reservoir is a special type of host. It's a long-term host because of thousand years of adaptation between pathogen and host. Some animals are natural host or some na are natural reservoir like 
bats and rabies or some uh, for some diseases uh, they carry pathogen but themselves do not show any symptoms another important concept is vector uh, a vector is an arthropod like a mosquito or tick or other insect that transmit disease agent or pathogen from one host to another uh, usually by biting so uh, when you say vector borne disease it refers to an arthropod borne disease like uh, such as leishmaniasis or tick borne disease such as lyme disease or mosquito borne disease such as uh, west nile virus and malaria the next term is zoonosis zoonosis or zoonotic diseases are a type of diseases that can be transmitted from animals to human in other words, zoonotic diseases are common between human beings and animals and often infect animals. An uh, example of zoonotic diseases is uh, anthrax. Uh, and zoonotic diseases are the diseases that are endemic in animals. Endemic areas are areas that diseases constantly occur in. So it depends on the geography and uh, where it happens. Uh, for, for instance, Connecticut is an endemic area for Lyme disease. And epizootic diseases are the diseases that are epidemic in animals. And epidemic means the disease occurring more than normal. Uh, brucellosis is an example of epizootic uh, diseases. So generally, in epizootic, the disease occur in larger area than enzootic. Uh, environment can have impact on the occurrence of vector-borne disease and, uh, and then on the humans directly and uh, indirectly. Direct effects such as climate change or El Nino uh, can cause vector-borne disease to abruptly uh, spread from endemic areas to non-endemic areas. For example, West Nile virus uh, moved from Africa to the United States as a non-endemic area. And uh, abundance of vectors can increase uh, the chance of being infected and can pose a socioeconomic burden to the society. Climate change can also indirectly affect uh, occurrence of vector-borne disease, such as uh, on the behavior of the people. For instance, when temperature goes up, people tend to wear less clothes. With less coverage, the probability that people get infected by the bite of ticks or mosquitoes will increase. And when there are more ticks and mosquitoes, people use pesticides to kill the insects. And pesticides are very harmful and may cause short-term and long-term adverse effects to the people. So these were the main terminologies in the studies of vector-borne and zoonotic diseases. Let's move on to talk about uh, major vector-borne diseases worldwide. Uh, the first one is malaria. Malaria is uh, the most frequent mosquito-borne disease or even most frequent vector-borne disease in the world. It is uh, endemic or constantly occurring in almost 100 countries and almost 50% of population of the world are at risk of infection. It kills uh, 500,000 people every year and more than 250 uh, million uh, people show clinical symptoms such as fever. Uh, this heat map uh, shows the risk of malaria infection. You can see malaria transmission occurs primarily in Central and Western Africa. Uh, this red color shows high risk areas of malaria. And some regions in Asia such as India and um, also Southeast Africa uh, with yellow colors have moderate rate of malaria risk. So high risk areas primarily are tropical areas which makes sense because temperature and humidity in these areas are generally uh, provide favorable condition for the mosquitoes uh, because mosquitoes generally like high temperature and uh, humidity for breeding and feeding these maps uh, shows the distribution of malaria in u.s over time u.s used to have large uh, geographic areas infected by malaria in 18 82 so malaria was endemic in u.s previously you can see it was more prevalent in most part of u.s particularly in central and eastern u.s but uh, after two decades due to extensive eradication programs uh, the distribution restricted to the uh, south and southeastern parts and according to the cdc 
in the year 2002, uh, there were only 1,700 cases of malaria diagnosed in the U.S., and most of them were travelers from endemic countries such as South Asia and Central and Western Africa, and only five cases acquired uh, malaria in the U.S. So uh, now malaria is very rare in the U.S. U.S. is almost free from malaria. Uh, the question is, what causes malaria? The pathogen of malaria is a parasite called uh, plasmodium, and the pathogen can be transmitted from one infected person to another person by the bite of a specific species of mosquitoes called Anopheles. So the host in malaria is human. There are many different species of mosquitoes. Uh, some prefer human beings, some prefer animals but this species has a strong preference to feed on human beings and only female species of anopheles can uh, transmit the parasite because the female one is only feeds on human blood so look at this picture this uh, circle uh, uh, is our red blood cell and these shapes that are like headphone uh, that's the parasite or pathogens of malaria which is uh, plasmodium. Uh, this uh, figure shows malaria transmission cycle. Let's say you have a female Anopheles uh, mosquito which carries plasmodium uh, parasite. Once the mosquito bites an unlucky person, it actually injects the parasite into the bloodstream uh, of the person and the parasite moves uh, to the liver of a uh, human body. Okay, and uh, the parasite can then develop and fertilize and become mature and then it gets into our red blood cells. And uh, the parasite will stay there in the red blood cell and uses nutrients in the red blood cell. And after uh, two or three days when they done with their work, when they use the uh, nutrients uh, in the red blood cell, the red blood cell ruptures like this. So the parasite uh, leaves the cell after done with the cell, leaves the cells and moves to another cell and uses the energy and nutrient and other red blood cells. And if another mosquito bites that infected woman and takes her blood and bites this person, the parasite will be indirectly uh, transmitted to another person and infects this person as well. Uh, what are the typical symptoms of uh, malaria? Symptoms of malaria appears uh, usually after 10 to 15 days uh, after the bite of mosquito. This period is called uh, incubation period. So what is incubation period? The time interval between catching infection and appearance of symptoms. The typical symptom of malaria is episode of chill, fever, and sweating every two or three days. Uh, let's look at this chart. This, uh, the, the x-axis in this chart shows time in first day, second, third, and fourth day. And the y-axis shows the body temperature. Normal body temperature is 37. That's the normal body temperature. Uh, you can see in the morning of the first day, the body temperature of patient drops to 36. But at noon, it goes up uh, to very high temperature, almost 41 right and then again it's uh, in the evening it drops significantly to 36 and 37 so it will remain 36 and 37 for almost two or two days and then you will have another temperature rise and uh, uh, and also then drop so that's the symptom of malaria patient uh, malaria patients uh, episodes of chills and fever and the question is why two or three days? Because every two or three days, parasite use up the nutrients in the red blood cell and then invades to a new blood cell. That's why every two or three days, patient's body temperature changes a lot. And uh, if uh, untreated, malaria can become very dangerous disease because parasite rupture the red body cells of the vital organs. Other symptoms of malaria are anemia uh, because of destroying the red blood cell, uh, cognitive disorder, impairments, or even coma. And case fatality rate uh, for malaria is 10 to 20%, pretty high. 
uh, what is case fatality rate uh, means it means that among all of the infected patients of malaria 10 to 20 percent will die uh, in other words one to two percent out of 10 infected person will die Uh, a well-known strategy to control malaria was to spray an insecticide with the name of DDT. The full name of it uh, is this. Uh, honestly, I can't pronounce it, but uh, people simply call it DDT. DDT is a colorless, tasteless, and odorless chemical compound. Uh, it was highly effective in controlling malaria. This picture shows a biplane uh, that was used to spray DDT over a wide area and also in military. Uh, personnel spray DDT in endemic areas of malaria, but uh, because of its long-lasting adverse environmental impacts of DDT to the uh, wildlife and especially to birds, the use of DDT was banned uh, in 1986. So that was about the malaria. The second uh, vector-borne disease, which is an arthropod-borne disease, is uh, leishmaniasis. Uh, World Health Organization, WHO, classifies leishmaniasis as a neglected tropical disease because little attention and consideration is being paid to the disease despite its remarkable public health impacts. Uh, almost 350 million people from 88 countries are at risk of uh, leishmania infection. And currently 12 million cases or prevalent cases are infected and 2 million new cases or incident cases are diagnosed every year. This map, uh, this map shows the geographic distribution of leishmania. As you can see the distribution is almost restricted to the tropical and subtropical countries. Uh, leishmaniasis has three major forms. The first one is cutaneous leishmaniasis, which is also called localized and simple leishmaniasis. It's a non-fatal and self-healing form of leishmaniasis, but, but it can cause some unpleasant scars on exposed skin, which may take several years to heal. So uh, it causes negative psychological effects to the patients. And less common uh, form of leishmaniasis is mu um, mucocutaneous leishmaniasis, which is similar to cutaneous leishmaniasis, but it mostly affects nose and mouth uh, regions of the patients. And the last form of leishmaniasis, which is the fatal form of leishmaniasis, is visceral leishmaniasis or colazar. Uh, it causes enlarged spleen and liver. Uh, and has high mortality and the case fat fatality rate is 7%. Uh, among the different clinical spectrum of uh, leishmaniasis, CL is the most common form and VL is the most serious form, which is fatal. Uh, CL is more uh, common in tropical countries, tropical and subtropical countries, especially in Middle East and uh, South America, uh, especially in Brazil, and VL is more common in Southeast Asia, uh, such as Nepal and India, and also Eastern Africa. Uh, the major pathogen for leishmaniasis is leishmania parasite, and different species causes different form of leishmaniasis, which invades human body. And uh, the major host is rodents for CL and dogs for VL. And the ve vector for CL is sandfly that transmit pathogen from host to humans, uh, named uh, Phlebotomus papetasi. Uh, incubation period of uh, CL, which is the interval between catching infection and appearance of the symptoms, is several weeks to months. And uh, CL is a major concern of U.S. military personnel that serve in uh, Middle East countries such as Iraq and Afghanistan because of, as you remember, CL is endemic in most Middle uh, Eastern countries. Like. Now, uh, let's move on to talk about the leading vector borne disease in the United States. The first one is West Nile virus, which is the leading mosquito borne disease in this country. Uh, here are some statistics that uh, uh, I grabbed from Center for Disease Control and Prevention. 
uh, CDC, according to CDC, as of September 2019, uh, 46 states uh, of U.S. reported West Nile virus cases in human, birds, and mosquitoes. Overall, 543 uh, cases of West Nile virus in people have been reported to CDC. And uh, this map shows a space-time distribution of West Nile virus. Uh, as you can see, it was initiated from Eastern Africa in 1930 and uh, then in 1950 moved uh, to North Africa and in 1960 uh, the disease spread to other continents such as Asia and Europe and Australia and in 1990 West Nile virus uh, introduced to the United States. Uh, this map also shows the space-time diffusion of West Nile virus in the U.S. You can see it started in uh, 1999 from New York, New Jersey, Maryland, Connecticut. Uh, then in the year 2000 moved to the north and south, south of these states to Pennsylvania, Virginia, North Carolina, Massachusetts, and uh, New Hampshire. Then the distribution shifted, to, uh, shifted toward western and central states. And, uh, and in the year 2002, moved to the West, such as Idaho and New Mexico and Washington. Uh, there was an exponential increase in both number of human cases of West Nile virus and also the number of deaths from uh, 1999 to 2003. Uh, in the year 1999, only 62 cases of West Nile virus and only seven deaths were reported, but the number exponentially increased to about 10,000 infected cases and 264 deaths in the year 2003. Uh, the causative agent or pathogen of West Nile virus is flavivirus and is transmitted by mosquitoes and from birds. Birds serve as the major reservoir of West Nile virus. Mosquitoes of Aedes and Culex species get flavivirus from birds and then they can transmit uh, the virus to human or other animals such as horses and cats. Uh, West Nile virus is not limited to humans. It can infect horses, rabbits, cats, squirrel, bats and so forth. So that's a possible reason for fast spread of West Nile virus in the US. And uh, incubation period of uh, West Nile virus is 3 to 14 days and 80 percent of cases don't show any symptoms or maybe a mild flu-like symptoms and the other 20 percent may develop fever, headache, vomiting and only less than one percent of cases show uh, severe symptoms such as encephalitis. Uh, what is encephalitis? Uh, encephalitis is inflammation of the brain and can cause severe headache and is very dangerous. It's, if left untreated, it can cause coma and death. And case fatality rate in West Nile virus is 3 to 15 percent. In other words, the percentage of infected ca uh, cases that could die is 3 percent to 15 percent. Uh, now let's talk about uh, Lyme disease. Uh, Lyme disease is the most frequent vector-borne disease in the U.S. with almost 30,000 human cases every year. It is also the uh, most common tick-borne disease in North America. Uh, Lyme disease is caused by bacteria or pathogen Borrelia burgdorferi. Uh, so Lyme disease is not caused by ticks. It is caused by Borrelia. And ticks are only the carrier or vectors. Uh, of it. They can transfer Borrelia from host to human. The tick that transmits Borrelia is also known as deer tick or black leg tick. Uh, the scientific name of the tick is uh, Exudus scapularis. Uh, the tick must uh, be attached to human body for at least 36 hours to transmit uh, Borrelia. So if you successfully remove tick off your skin in 36 hours after the bite, you won't get Lyme disease. According to uh, Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, 96% uh, of human cases of Lyme disease in the year 2017 only occurred in 14 states, so it has a focused distribution. 
This map shows the geographic distribution of Lyme disease in the U.S. in the year 2017. I grabbed this map from CDC. We can see the distribution is uh, restricted almost to the midwestern and northeastern of the U.S. Uh, now let's talk about the transmission cycle of Lyme disease. This figure shows the life stage of tick. Uh, transmission cycle of tick is two years. It starts with eggs and uh, in a spring, in the summer, eggs hatch and uh, turn into larva. Larvae are very small body-sized ticks with six legs and can only be hunt for small animals uh, like birds and mice. After one blood meal, uh, they go back to the soil and stay there during fall and also winter. Uh, that's the first year. In the next spring, larva grows into nymph and they will have eight legs. Uh, which means they can hunt larger mammals such as human beings and white-tailed deer, fox, and so forth. And uh, in the spring and summer of the second year, uh, they will have several blood meals. They obtain nutrients and uh, grow into adults. High-risk period of Lyme disease is actually a spring and uh, summer of the second year when they grow from nymph to adult this shaded area and uh, the adults uh, also will mate and uh, produce eggs again okay so which one do you think is the most dangerous adults or nymph uh, nymph is uh, more dangerous because adults can easily be identified by people because uh, they are very they have a very big size and but nymph is very small and it's hard to detect. Uh, look at, uh, let's look at this coin, uh, this one. So you can compare the size of the uh, uh, size of the different uh, stages of ticks. So here is eggs, larva, six legs, nymph, eight legs, and adults that can be easily identified by people. This one is the most dangerous part. Uh, Depending on the life stage of tick, there are different hosts. Uh, for larva and nymph, uh, uh, which are very small and not mature, uh, the host is almost small mammals, like white-footed mouse, which carries Borrelia bacteria, but doesn't get infected itself. But for adult ticks that are bigger, uh, as they have more legs so they can stay on large mammals like deer. So for adult ticks, uh, the host is white-tailed deer. Uh, so uh, depending on the life stage of the tick, the host is different. So what are the symptoms of Lyme disease? Lyme disease have three main stages of symptoms. Uh, stage number one is early localized infection, meaning that symptoms only manifest around the site of bite. So here is the site of uh, bite. And after three to 30 days after tick bite, some rashes will appear in about 80% of human cases, which is called bull's eye rash, as it's look like uh, bull's eye. And the center of, uh, the, center of the rash is the, the site of bite. That's the first stage of typical symptoms of Lyme disease. And if untreated, after one month to four months of tick bite, a stage number two starts. In a stage number two, Borrelia begins to spread from this local site uh, to other parts of infected patients and disseminate the bacteria and cause uh, problems such as facial paralysis or loss of muscle function on the face. And like this picture, also, severe headache and neck stiffness uh, is, is other symptoms. So it's very hard to move your neck uh, for, the second, uh, for the second stage of the Lyme disease. And uh, if the patient do not treat bull's eye rash, these symptoms may, may appear. Again if, uh, again, if left untreated after four months of the tick bite, Stage number three is start. This is stage causes persistent infection. They, uh, the patient will develop severe chronic symptoms for a long time. 
such as arthritis or joint inflammation and severe headache. Uh, also, b bacteria may move to our brain and cause ence encephalitis, which is inflammation of brain, and cause cognitive disorder. Uh, Lyme disease is not fatal. Uh, fatality rate of Lyme disease is very, very low or rare. And most of the Lyme disease cases are treated in the first step by taking some antibiotics. Uh, in this figure, you can see temporal pattern of report, reported Lyme disease in the U.S., which months have higher number of infected persons, uh, May, June, July, August. Uh, so typically late spring and summer corresponds to the most active seasons for ticks. That's the nymph stage that hunts for number of blood males to grow into adults. Uh, also, a uh, number of human cases of Lyme in U.S. from 1995 to 2009 constantly increased from almost 12,000 uh, cases per year and triple to 30,000 cases per year. On average, eight cases uh, per 100,000 get Lyme disease. Uh, and uh, finally, these are uh, several reasons for this increase of the number of the cases. The first area states that this is because of the increase in the population of deer, which serve as the main host of Lyme disease. Generally, as the population of white-tailed uh, deer increases, we have more hosts and more food for uh, exuded scapular ticks and more cases of Lyme. Another hypothesis is that uh, more people are living in wooded areas. They moved from urban areas to rural areas and are more likely to be infected by ticks. As you know, wooded areas are suitable uh, habitat for ticks. Another theory is ticks and vectors are moving to non-endemic areas of U.S., such as western parts because of climate change. Or it could be because of uh, improved disease recognition. Because of advances in technology and medical researchers, uh, they can easier detect new cases of Lyme compared to the past. So these are the theories explain uh, why we have a larger number of Lyme disease compared to the past.